I'm Ted. I'm Charlton. I'm Alex. I'm Roger. We're Dead Messenger, and you're watching MontrealMusic.tv. A lot of bands playing sort of harder rock and roll around right now, but with, uh, with a melodic sort of pop sensibility, which is something that I enjoy, so I don't know, it's something that we're trying to do, kind of like pop harmonies and a rock and roll kind of rhythm. I grew up listening to like the Pixies and like you know ACDC or early ACDC like Bon Scott you know 74 to 80, 1980 ACDC and like The Clash you know stuff like that and that's that's kind of where we wanted to, to, to build from but still take it somewhere that's like you know going to be 2010. Love is the Only Weapon, We, if you listen to the record, we sampled Jim Jones preaching during the Jonestown Massacre. It was a big, it was like a big uh, kind of mass suicide that happened uh, in Guyana, and, and I'm sure you, you've all heard this. And we sampled him, and he's talking about stuff and ranting and being crazy while people are like killing themselves and being like, Boo -boo. and uh, we thought it was just, you know, it, was a, it sounded cool. So we call the record Love is the Only Weapon. Not that he's cool. Or we Not that he's cool or that we endorse mass suicide. We don't endorse mass suicide. Basically, uh, Alex here runs a, like an art space, kind of venue, performance, uh, amazing place called The Pound, which is in Griffintown. And we started doing pre-production there, um, which was amazing, but at the time, there was like three people, including him, living in the space. And we were doing rehearsals like for about, I don't know, six, seven hours a day. And I don't know if you've ever had a band rehearsing at your house for six or seven hours a day in your living room, living room. <laughs> but it, 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 it really sucks. So basically we were left in a, at a point where we had to find somewhere to jam and the only place we could find to jam was, uh, was in my parents have a place out in the country, they have a barn. So we would drive out every day for like three weeks. In the morning we'd drive out to the country and we'd set up in the barn with like, you know, tractors and like lawnmowers all around us and do pre-production in a barn. And we were basically like a full band, like you, you heard us, like we're loud. We're just playing in a barn that's just like, you know, wood, like that thick. And uh, this guy got in a, in a, in a boat and rowed across the, uh, uh, the river. <laughs> and like, and, and came up to the barn and was like, stop. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Yeah, and you know, he was like, I like yeah, he was like, I like you guys. It's good, but stop. We got the whole Twitter and the whole Facebook and that whole thing, and we do it. And I guess the whole kind of concept is that you can you know, be feeding people information about your band all the time, which we do. But like, as a Facebook user, as me, as the individual, the Facebook user, I really hate getting spam and the kind of useless information from bands. You're kind of trying to walk a fine line between pissing people off and, and letting them know what you're doing. I was in bands when I was, you know, 18 years old, which was kind of pre, you know, Facebook, MySpace and all that. And the only way that you got people to your show is was by going out and giving flyers to people and putting up posters. We've kind of tried to adopt the whole like a, a hybrid of the two and, and have like really cool artwork because like you know po like poster artwork is really important and it's really cool. 
and, and to have a cool kind of visual um, element to your music and to kind of like associate yourself with good artists is an important thing. So, so even if we're just doing an internet flyer, we want to have, you know, have it look like a cool, you know, show poster because that, that's important too.